Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, joined by our good friend and guest, Phil Sharkey, president of the Higher Authority. Welcome to the Sharkey Report with uh, Sheriff Sharkey. How are you this morning, Sheriff? Jonathan, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. I always look forward to our time together, and uh, I have an interesting uh, 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 numbers prepared for you in my industry regarding what's going on out there uh, for people, uh, for companies checking out people looking uh, for jobs, the few that are looking for work. Got some bad. Uh, well, well, the few that are working, a uh, few that are looking that aren't in the game, but the many that are in the game that are looking as well. And we always know you come to us with great statistics, great numbers, do your research. What's the latest uh, scary number you have for employers out there? This is what I have for you, Jonathan. I have a survey from a, a reference checking company called Checkster. Uh, they just do reference checking. We do full pre employment screening, but they uh, their survey of 400 job applicants as well as 400 hiring managers, 800 people show that 78% of the candidates who applied for a job or received an offer in the last six months admitted that they were either misrepresenting themselves or considering considering misrepresenting themselves on the application. So 78%, Jonathan. Wow, almost eight out of 10. Almost eight, eight out, out of 10. every 10 applicants is telling you something that's not true or exactly. considering telling you something that's not true. Let's be clear. They're not necessarily, you know, they, they've got a devious mind, but they're not sure whether they want to push play. <laughs> it, it, exactly, exactly. And I always tell people, some people go to me, well, it's a resume. It's a white lie. It's a little lie. I, I was, my studies have shown in the 25 years in the business that once a person lies, it's like breaking that dam. It's like you can't go back. They've shown you that they will lie, so it's easier for them. So when you hire them and you ask them if they locked up, if they did this, if they did their job responsibilities, you know, we, we say in my business, a leopard doesn't change their spots. So once they've made that conscious decision to lie on a resume, if it comes push comes to shove again, they will lie again. And you can go roots in hiring a, a good screening company like ourselves to keep these people out of your company. As I often use the phrase, uh, same analogy, tip of the iceberg. You know, if they're gonna lie on that, what's gonna happen when uh, when it comes time to uh, cookies missing from the proverbial cookie jar? Who was it? it it's yeah. so true. We just had a, an applicant this week where they admitted to uh, some criminal charges to our clients and they said, they're okay with it, but let's do the background check anyways. And I use the exact same line, tip of the iceberg. And of course, what they admitted to was just a little slight introduction into the whole story and there were much more uh, charges and much more involvement and much more seriousness than they admitted so, to. So really interesting. I want to pull back the layers on the onion because I know you've got some stats behind the stats, but you just raised an interesting point for me. So somebody uh, um, has a, we'll call it a checkered past, a uh, blemish on their record. Um, sure. You know, always better to find that out in advance. And I think your point is, you know, follow follow the uh, the, the, the smoke and mm -hmm. see whether or not there's fire behind it, or if you know they're telling the truth in regards to that. So you know we're all human. Uh, you know the longer you're on this planet, the less the the, the, the greater the likelihood. Well, maybe ho hopefully not. The older you get, maybe the wiser you get, um, and it's and true. hopefully not. But you know everybody's got some sort of blemish on the record in some capacity. But I think to your point, uh, as long as they're forthcoming with that, you know we can nip it, we can address it, and see whether or not it has any implications for their employment. I just had this conversation yesterday with the client. And, and again, you know, we're, we're not big brother. I'm not going through someone's uh, trash or, or closet. Everyone has has issues. As you said, the longer you're on this planet, you acquire things that, that happen to you. But it's what we can live with. And, and again, it's the lying. It's the so serious nature of it. So um, whether they have some issues, and I applaud the person for admitting to it. But once again, they still showed you they still didn't come clean. Uh, the best applicants I see are ones that admit to what occurred exactly as it occurred. And then we find out uh, in this last case that it was just the tip of the iceberg, as you stated, it was much more severe. And they knew that, they knew not to tell the whole story. So it sort of throws out their little bit of honesty that they threw out there in the interview. Honestly, Phil, the wigs in my closet are just for Halloween use. <laughs> um, let, let, let's go a little bit behind the numbers. You said 78% and you've got a uh, proverbial and top I 10 list. Or, do, or I do have the top. These are the eight uh, areas that the they admitted to lying. And they are, Jonathan, as I list, uh, the first area is having a mastery of skills that they barely use, like Excel or a former foreign language. 60% admitted they did that. Working at a company longer than they did. Let me, let me stop you because that's going to yeah. be really common. And again, such a core piece. You know, you're talking about skills. Um, you know, I, I would imagine a means to mitigate that is there's a lot of tests online. You know, check out people's skill sets. If, they, if they're giving you that I'm a master in this, well, have them do a proficiency ex test. There, there, there is. There's a girl from Boston, this 28-year-old Stacy. She admitted to or she put on her resume. She took one level Mandarin class while she was uh, doing a semester abroad in Hong Kong. And she put on her resume that she was elementary proficient in Mandarin. So, of course, after they 
hired her. They had a case come up where they needed a Mandarin speaking person and they turned right to her. And she again had one semester's worth of- uh, I, I'm guessing that. Mandarin's not a language that you want to embellish. <laughs> I'm uh, suspecting not you're not mastering it in a semester. <laughs> no, and then what occurred was she got in trouble with the company and ultimately ended up getting terminated. Mm -hmm. So again, where I would counsel these people that they may get you in the door, but if it comes to, to shed some light on it, um, when it comes around full circle, it could really be a problem for you and a big embarrassment. So, Excellent. So I'm sorry, I interrupted number two on the list. Number two is a big one for me because a lot of people go to me and they shrug, but it's working at a company longer than they did in order to admit another employer. 50% admitted to doing that. And we surface that all the time, gaps in employment, longer claims of employment. A lot of people go, so what? You know, uh, they claim they worked six months. We find out it was two months. It is a big so what. Uh, why say that in the first place? Most times there's a reason and it's usually not a good one. And then also it fills in the holes. So what were they doing during these holes? I've actually had some people cover being in jail for three years because they claimed they were at an employer. Um, mm -hmm. And there, there usually is a reason that they consciously reported a gap in, you know, hit a gap in employment by extending employment with, with their their other jobs. It's a big issue. People can't just push that. Aside. I, well, I would imagine, again, we're back to the same issue. You know, if you've got gaps in employment, uh, best to come clean and what the issue is. I mean, you know, again, we've faced uh, a number of economic challenges, the pandemic, et cetera. You know, people had gaps in their employment. Um, totally you know, understandable. Care, caring for a child, a family member, uh, a parent, et cetera. Uh, totally all those types of things are, you know, again, legitimate reasons, but uh, I, I think your point, come clean. Exactly. And employers will actually understand that. And you go into a much better situation where common sense takes over. And so many people, I think, out of fear to get the job um, will embellish, lie, hide things. Um, and, and going that route is just down the wrong road, absolutely down the wrong road. Excellent. So what we're all about here is, uh, as you know, at Radio Entrepreneurs is giving people tips and tricks. So number three on the list, this is for yeah, employers, the, perspective yeah, this things is a to look out for. Is the, uh, Jonathan having a higher GPA by more than half a point, 49% said that uh, obviously, you know, that, that just people just do that. And uh, many of my friends have done that as well. And uh, it, it's a common area, but not really necessary. You know, they don't look that closely at it. They just want to see that you have the degree. Most don't care what your GPA was. Uh, another one is holding a director title when the actual role was manager or equivalent lower level. 41% do that. That's a big one for me. I've many times talked to a supervisor who said, no, that's my job. That's what I do when it's the person claiming that everybody, you know, one time they take out the trash and they're, you know, they elevate their position to another area. So um, that happens often. And, you know, I would tell people your final title that they pay you for, that's the title you have to put down as your previous uh, position in the company. Excellent. Don't embellish, don't, don't give yourself the, the raise that you didn't have. I, do, do you have uh, statistics on the flip side? How many uh, companies actually, and this is an interesting one because I find all the time, actually follow up on employment references? Uh, I, I'm guessing that the number is less than the majority. Uh, that They may ask for them, but whether they actually follow up and do a very good job is another question. You're exactly, it's a huge number. It's a high percentage where they may ask and they may not even reach out or it's a cursory reach out, a very quick call, or it's not a professional, it's the HR person, just sort of checking a box. I, don't, I did speak to Jonathan's reference and I always tell them, let me do it. Let me try to reach the supervisors. That's who we want to speak with, not the three references. I've had people in prison give me three good references. When they hand you references, 99% of the time, they're going to be favorable or they're really not the brightest person at all to give you someone who's going to be negative. Um, yeah, and that's not and, who I want to talk to. And, and I think, yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of employers don't um, take the time. I mean, they may recognize, but they've got the opportunity to push back and say, yeah. you know, hey, let's look at this, you know, past experience in your resume. Uh, I'd like to talk to somebody from here. There's no doubt about it. And Jonathan, it all comes down to, and I was again, some people saying, you're like big brother going over, above and beyond. No, it's not. You're just trying to meet someone and bring them into company. That's an honest person shaking your hand saying, hi, Jonathan, nice to meet you. I'm Phil Sharkey and I'm lying to you or I'm not. So it's your initial introduction, your initial way in the door. And I know why they do it. But uh, even as bad as these numbers are, there's still many people that don't. So to me, a background check is really information it gives you the best decision to make on your hiring situation. You judge them how they, they dress when they come in, how they handle themselves, their knowledge and their resume. And the background check is just one more step in that process, just to make sure they are who they say they are. It's not very complicated. Absolutely. Next on our list. We got uh, um, uh, earning a degree from a prestigious university when they actually were a few credits short, 40%. Big one. People uh, uh, 
do this all the time for us. And the next one after that is earning a degree from prestigious university instead of where they actually went. We have some people where, you know, there's nothing wrong. I mean, Massachusetts-based company with graduating from Bridgewater State and they'll put down it was UMass Amherst. I don't know why they would do that because it's very easy to check. And the third I, I would imagine is, that's a pretty simple one to verify it, one it, way or another. Yeah. It's a very simple one and people falsify that all the time. And the last school one we have is earning a degree from prestigious university when they'd only taken one class online. 39% said they did that. So again, wow. with the ability of online education these days, people go way overboard thinking that, well, it's really not checkable and I can get away with this one without any repercussions at all. No, it's very easy to check out and we do it all the time. So, so again, the summary and the, uh, the, the findings here is, uh, you know, ver trust but verify. Uh, yeah. a good, a good, good adage to use in terms of employment, but to your point, there's a lot uh, that employers can do to verify the information and ask questions and follow up. And uh, for, for um, prospective employees, best honesty is the best policy. Absolutely, Jonathan. And I always tell people that these numbers are from people that know a background check is going to be conducted. So even if you're out there looking for work and you're thinking about this, once they put down the release form in front of you and tell you that you're going to have a background check conducted, then it's time to really think about what you're going to do. Because all these numbers, 35% that we see, 78% that claim that they would lie. Once they tell you that we're going to do a background check, now you're given fair warning and still we get these numbers, which is, that's what's really shocking. They're not just randomly grabbing people. These that are people really, that know we're going to check. That really is frightening. Uh, this has been the Sharkey Report with Sheriff Sharkey. Phil, always a pleasure to have you on. Always a pleasure to talk to you. If people want to reach out and talk more about your employment screening offerings and uh, various service that you offer and how to engage you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Jonathan, through, through the web at hireauth.com. That's H-I-R-E-A-U-T-H.com. You can email the link right there. You can also call the office. And this is strange in my industry. You actually get a person that answers the phone. So that's at 508-230-5901. And uh, we're, we're ready. We only have senior level investigators that do our work. So uh, give us a call and, and we'll make sure you're protected. As always, great to see you. Great to hear your uh, insight into the industry and best practices. And always a pleasure to talk with you, Phil. Thanks, Jonathan. Have a great one. You as well. And we'll be right back with another segment on Radio Entrepreneurs.